Hey everyone, welcome back to Shane Flynn Outdoors. Obviously this is not a, uh, a fishing adventure today. I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about um, some baits that I've been using and address a couple of questions that I came across in, on Facebook and uh, on YouTube, actually all on Facebook private messages, on my last video that I put out about spinnerbait fishing. And one of the, I got two questions, um, and I thought I would wrap this those questions into a very popular topic or a very controversial topic, however you want to put it. Um, Spinnerbaits and chatterbaits. Which one's better? When do you use which one? You know, I like them both. Um, but what I do, you know, the last few videos I put out, I've caught a lot of bass on spinnerbaits. And actually, I was out on hunting run yesterday, and I probably caught a dozen more bass, all in that two and three pound range on a spinnerbait. Um, it's really productive this time of year. So I thought I'd talk about the type of baits that I use, when to use the spinnerbait, when to use the chatterbait. So let's just get right into it. Um, the last few weeks, um, the, with the fall bite turnover, um, the bass have moved up shallow. And I found that when the bass start to move up shallow and you get some wind on the water, um, I like to start throwing the spinnerbait. The spinnerbait is a very, is, it's kind of my comfort bait. I like to use it, especially in the spring and the fall, when the bass are chasing shad or they're looking for something shiny. You know, there's, there's three things you think about with a spinnerbait. You get fast movement, you get a lot of flash from the blades, and you get vibration. And you know, the lateral line on the bass, they pick up vibration uh, pretty well, and the flash from the blades makes, a, makes, you know, makes it attractive, plus the action from the skirt and whatever grub you put on the back, um, makes it a pretty good bait um, and I've caught a lot a lot a lot of bass caught a lot of big bass caught a lot of small bass on it um, I wouldn't say it's just a big bass bait or a small bass bait it's just a really good bass bait but you know there's a time and place for the chatterbait and I like a chatterbait and I fished a chatterbait quite a bit in the winter time and in the early spring actually I'll just say this my largest bass in Virginia not my largest bass overall my largest bass in Virginia actually came on here it is this chatterbait right here. I caught a seven pound, six ounce bass in Abel Lake on a chatterbait in February, like February 10th. Um, I really like to use the chatterbait. You don't get flash, you do get movement, but you get a different vibration, more of a thumpy vibration. And I can fish this much slower, typically, than I can a spinnerbait. And that's when I like to use a chatterbait, um, is when it's a little bit slower action, and um you know in in really i use it more in the winter early spring and i'd use it in fall late fall too when the water temperatures start dropping into the you know the low 50s high 40s i'm going to go to a chatterbait it just gives off such good thumping vibration and you can jig this a lot better you know you can swim jig this better than you can test spinnerbait um so that's when i like to go to the chatterbait and you know the, the color is about the same for me with spinnerbaits and chatterbaits. My go-to color with both is a white and chartreuse um, color skirt with either a white grub trail or a, a chartreuse grub trail like it's on this. And I'll mix it up. Um, but I'll put, that just adds body to the, uh, the lure as well. And sometimes, let's see if I got one. I think I have one over here. Uh, I don't have it out here. I'll put a bigger type of trailer on there to make it look, here it is. I'll put something like this Kitek uh, sw swing shad on the back of a chatterbait to give it some bulk. Uh, this is actually on a spinnerbait. Um, this color, which I call bluegill, you know, bluegill or brim, I really like this color in late fall on the chatterbait and on the spinnerbait. Um, but typically I go to a white and chartreuse that's where I'll start at and maybe refine it unless I know that they're fishing on that color. I really like the spinnerbait around logs, around objects, you know, docks, whatever. Because what I do with a spinnerbait, and this drives a lot of bites, is when I bring, come by a stump or a tree or a boat ramp or boat dock, I hit everything. I bounce this thing off of sticks, posts, stumps, whatever and that will usually drive bites a lot of time. Now I'll slow, and, slow down and speed up the retrieve on a spinnerbait to do that as well, but boy, when I see stumps and standing, anything that I know I can bounce a spinnerbait off of, 
I throw this spinnerbait. The key to this, though, I will tell, tell you anybody, it's not 100%, but you need wind. If you want to fish a spinnerbait, the wind helps, you know, blur the object and it helps, uh, you catch more bass in the wind. Now, can you catch bass in calm water on a spinnerbait? Sure. You can catch, now I would tell you on a, on a chatterbait, doesn't matter because it's down there deeper. A little wind helps on any type of bait except maybe your soft plastics. Um, but when you're down there jigging this deeper in the winter time, I don't think wind is much of a factor. Still nice to have, but with a chatterbait, because it's got that different type of thumping action, I don't think uh, you need as much wind. But you know, yesterday, uh, for example, I got it to the lake right at 6.30, got on the water at 6.45, and I threw a buzz bait because it was calm, and I didn't catch, I got a couple short strikes on the buzz bait. But as soon as the wind picked up, and I started catching fish. And you can see it on the video. And I actually was throwing a white and yellow chartreuse, actually very similar to this right here. Um, it's on my pole over there. I was not throwing a willow leaf. I was throwing an Indiana blade yesterday. The reason I was throwing an Indiana blade was the color of the water. So if you ever fish out at hunting run for you local fishermen, that is a very, usually a very clear lake, but they've dropped the water down about 12 feet. And it's, it's hard to even get your boat in and out of the uh, lake right now. But what happened is the wind is causing these mud lines to stir up on the banks. And when you want, when you get that, you want to be able to bass ambush out of those mud lines. So I put an Indiana blade on, let's see, do I have an Indiana blade here? I probably do. I put an Indiana blade right here. That's an Indiana blade versus a willow leaf. You get a little more thumping action out of an Indiana blade, and it's not as not as not as much of a thumping action as you do as a double Colorado, but it gives a little bit more vibration where the bass can jump out and grab it and locate it real quickly. So um, that's what I was throwing yesterday. It worked real well. I I caught more than a dozen bass on a spinnerbait yesterday. The biggest being like three pounds, four or six ounces, if I recall right. But a lot of two two and a half pounders so you know when do you change blades you got you got to think about that i will tell you a couple things that i like to use the spinnerbait on as well is when the water colors up so if you get a rain or the the water in the lake is stained i'll go to a colorado blade and i've got other i've got a whole box of spinnerbaits over here different ones but i even throw a like an orange colored blade in muddy water and an orange uh, spinnerbait to uh, and when the water's dirty again the, it's really the vibration um, that you're going after in the muddy water especially if it's a clear lake um, and it gets muddy all of a sudden from whatever runoff or things like that you want to make you want a lot of vibration a lot of something they can they can locate quickly if they're biting a lot of times when it quickly changes from clear to muddy they won't bite that well but when they do uh, a Colorado blade gives you more of a thump but for the most part, I would say over 50% of my, my uh, spinnerbaits in my box are willow leaf and a, color, a small Colorado. And what I'll typically do, if I have that color in that, I'll have it in a double Colorado or an Indiana blade. So I, I keep several different versions. Um, in this, with, the, with the chatterbait, or you know, there's different jackhammer chatterbait, but uh, you know, vibrating jig bait. Same thing, same colors. Um, I like gold um, over silver in the chatterbait. Um, I like to mix it up on a spinnerbait. But um, again, I typically want to throw that in the in the cold, colder water. Just my preference. I did fish deep this summer a little bit with the chatterbait, trying it out. Uh, just letting it drop way down on a heavier chatterbait and jigging it straight up. I caught one bass that way. I didn't fish it that long to, 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 uh, to really test it, but I've heard that's a very productive way to catch fish in the summer when those bass are really deep and you can jig them with a chatterbait. But uh, the one thing I just like about a chatterbait, it's not as weedless um, as, say, a spinnerbait. I can buzz the spinnerbait over the weeds real easy. I can do that with a chatterbait, but it's a little tougher. Um, you know, it's a bigger, tighter wobble. That's why I like a, you know, jig it more around the sticks and weeds. And it's not as, um, I, I get this caught up in sticks a little bit more than I do a spinnerbait too. So it's not as friendly from getting hangups and weeds, but it's still a highly effective bait. 
especially I, like I said I really like it in colder water um, it's really good in the spring as well it's just a really good bait um, my preference though is you know like I said it's kind of my comfort bait to spinner bait but you can you know there's all kinds of different brands of all right you know the chatter bait I, I guess this I thought I had one over here in the box I do I think this is the probably the the Z-Man chatterbait is probably the most popular one um, but I know Booyah makes one there's several different versions of it out there but it's you know bladed jig bait is what I'm what I'm talking about so really I like both of them um, I tend to go to the spinnerbait because I grew up with the spinnerbait um, and um, it's something I fished with for a long time but I have been I have caught a lot of fish on both um, and like I said my biggest bass in Virginia uh, seven pounds six ounces and able late came off this actual thought I had it here earlier um, off a off a chatterbait so really good bait there it is right there that right there really good bait it's just really you got it's, it's personal choice they're good and effective um, but when you need flash um, I, I'm going to go with the spinnerbait um, like this windy action that what I had yesterday um, out on the lake with a little bit of muddy water I need that flash I need that speed and need the speed I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna go with the spinnerbait um, now when it slows down a little bit this in, in probably another three or four weeks I'll probably you'll probably see me throwing the chatterbait more but you know I, I wanted to answer that question a lot of you can probably look on YouTube there's probably 50 of these videos everybody will give you a different you know reason why one's better than the other or if one is better than the other I don't think one is better than the other it's what you feel comfortable with so there you have it I've got a bunch of different ones laid out here. Um, I just keep a lot of spinner baits and a lot of chatter baits in different colors and different blades because um, you never know. And what I'll tell you is when the fish are biting like they were yesterday, you want to have a backup if you break one off because <laughs> you don't want to be caught with the wrong without the spinner bait you've been catching bass on. So I usually when I buy a spinner bait or a chatter bait, I mean I, here you go. I carry I buy two, uh, two at a time just to have have them and have extras in the boat so that's it for for this edition i do want to make one announcement you know with uh late fall coming on and you know the fishing is going to be slowing down i've decided on the channel that i'm i'm not going to pause the channel what i'd like to do over the fall is i'm going to start a uh i'm going to start a, a program or a podcast if you will video cast and i'm going to call it fish chatter and what fish chatter is going to be about is having uh other YouTube fishermen on our on the channel and talking about you know their fishing experience what they what you know why they chose to put themselves on YouTube and share their experiences and what they like about fishing and how they started this process so I thought it'd be a good way to collaborate with other YouTube fishermen um, I'm gonna start that in uh, probably the first of November I'm gonna start the first interview I got a few people that uh, said they would they would uh, do the interviews hopefully it'll it'll catch on and we can get several different folks uh, to uh, interview it may even just take some some local fishermen I got a few local fishermen that talk to me all the time I might invite them on if they're if they're wanting to do so because uh, it's all about sharing it's why I have my YouTube channel is, is share my fishing experience share you know what I've been doing how I've been catching fish and if we can broaden it to other YouTube fishermen um, to help share their their channel and their experience fishing we're gonna go for it so that'll be coming in in uh, probably early to mid November I've got a lot of content that I still got to get out. Probably not going to get it out. Probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some videos throughout the winter when I'm not fishing, of uh, maybe some summer fishing or something I didn't uh, get out there. But anyways, look forward look forward to uh, getting you those uh, the fish chatter editions out um, in mid early to mid November. So that's all I got for this edition. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in, and as always, tight lines and good luck fishing.